we can join you. Um, so now let's get to our, our topic at hand, uh, which is healing the body. So Kepra, I want to bring you in, um, because what, what do we mean when we talk about healing the body? And what would you say to somebody who says, well, I'm not sick, so I don't need mm -hmm. to make any changes? What, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. So healing the body is such a collective conversation, right? Our body is physical and our body is energetic or spiritual. So you can say, I'm healthy. There's nothing wrong with me. But healing the body has so many layers to it. Queen just talked about generational trauma from what her grandfather and her family, the legacy that they dealt with. And so what type of consumption what's your caloric consumption of stress yes. how many stressful calories wow. are you taking on on a daily basis in your energetic body that mm -hmm. ultimately has a physical impact on your physical well-being yes. and also there are a lot of people now that the plant-based movement is happening there are a lot of people who are not eating meat but they're not necessarily getting a, a well-rounded nutritional balance and so when we talk about healing, healing is an action word. Healing is a process. And so it's also an investment in the future. Today, you might be relatively well, but you also want to make sure you're building your bones, you're keeping your blood clean, you're keeping your bowels clear, you're making sure your breath is clear, and you're supporting your brain health because a lot of people in later years are experiencing dementia and Alzheimer's. So I talk about the four B's, the blood, the bowel, the breath, the brain, the blood, the bowel, the breath, the brain. You want to keep your blood clean. You want to keep your bowels clear. You want to keep your breath or your respiratory system clear and free from mucus. And you want to keep your brain sharp. And by doing that, you invest in your health in the long run. So it's not just today, but it's who you're going to be 20 years from now. And also, if you're well, but your family is not well, like you're the one working out and eating healthy and everyone else is kind of sick and dying around you, then your collective body, which again is your home and your community, is also not well. And eventually it's going to wear on you because they're going to impact you and you're going to have to care for them. Hmm. And you have um, a, phys a demonstration. You have a demonstration of kind of the standard diet. and, and Yeah. Like so... Shift. Yeah, because, you know, at the end of the day, when we talk about a diet, you can't live on a diet, anything. But if you think about the average American nutritional intake, every meal is meat, dairy, and cheese. So even if you all think about what's your favorite breakfast, and I know we turned off the comments, but if you call it out, it might be bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. And that would be your starch, which is your roll. In, in, in your, and this would be your intestines. <laughs> so this is your intestines. That's your starch. And then mm -hmm. your, your bacon or your turkey bacon or your sausage would be your meat. And then your cheese would be here. And that would go inside your intestines. And then, of course, let's not forget, we got to make sure we toast it and we put some butter. Now, this is just for demo. I hope you're not putting that much butter <laughs> on your rope. But let's just say that that's breakfast. Now, what's for lunch? The average oh. lunch is what? Pizza, right? So pizza is what? You've got your starch right mm -hmm. you've got mm -hmm. oh pizza you've got lots of cheese right and you've got of course you might have pepperoni or sausage or something else on it and of course there's all your oils and fats and that's lunch <laughs> now wow. we're talking about dinner what's for mm. dinner what's for dinner okay we got some chicken all right it's free range it's broiled it's skinless so you you know okay cool but you still got your your meat and that's okay right You've got your macaroni and cheese, which is your starch. And then, of course, you've got your, you got to have four cheeses in a black hole. You got your extra sharp cheddar. You got your <laughs> oh. white cheddar. Right? <laughs> and you got some breadcrumbs. And, of course, you know, you got to rub that macaroni with what? Lots of butter. Ooh. And mm -hmm. in some communities, listen, we know that if you're not having mac and cheese, you having all of the rice, all of the rice. Sometimes rice is the largest part of the meal, right? You go to the Caribbean spot, you get a lot of rice and a lot of meat, right? So this is typically breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Oh, You've wow. got your starch, your dairy, and your um, meat. Now, I'm not here to food shame. I just wanted to do this demo because if this is your intestines, this is mm. one day. This is starch, dairy, and flesh. 
and it doesn't move. Remember paper mache in school? The starch would get hard, right? And you'd make a little mask out of it. But starch gets hard. Cheese is like the glue. It deforms mucus in the body. And mucus does not dissolve on its own. And so that turns to plaque on the brain and in the heart, which is why people have cholesterol issues. And then the flesh, you know, the flesh is chilling. You chewed it up, it's sitting there, it's done. You know what I'm saying? And so the question is, what's going to move this out of your intestines? Again, the bowels is where wow. the immune system lives. So when the bowels are compromised, the blood vessels are going to the intestines to bring nutrients to the organs. But if this is what's happening, it's bringing fermented, acidic, processed issue through the blood to the body. And so you really want to make sure that you have some life on your plate. You want something live. You want foods that naturally contain water, or that have legs like fiber. So it can actually push that food out of your digestive system. So is there any life on your plate? And so the importance of this conversation is that we're talking about healing the body because you might look good, but you might not be good on the inside. If your energy levels are low or you have a low tolerance for stress or you have a short fuse, it could be because you have too much starch or you're blocked. So today's conversation is just mindfulness, right? Ask yourself every day, with this meal, is there any life? Is there any water in this meal right here that's going to move all this out? Because that's really important. And there are levels, Queen of Food teaches us about food combining and everything. But first and foremost, is there any life on your plate? So mm. keep that in mind. Mm. Yes. That was such a powerful demonstration. Wow. God, Amazing. I love that. <laughs> um, Queen of Fu, I, I started um, following your nutritional guidelines a few weeks ago. And, you know, Kepper mentioned food shaming. And I loved, this was the most freeing thing you said to me. You said, if you, if you fall off, just love yourself through it and just move yeah. on. You know, you don't have to beat yourself up over it. And no. that freed me. And the other thing that you said was, don't focus on restricting the bad. Just put in as much good as possible yeah. and that will reduce your cravings. And I will tell you, I've never eaten more vegetables in my life. I'm seeing it. I'm, 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 I'm staring it. at you, Marva. I am <laughs> staring at you when I, I said, wait a minute, something has shifted. You are just super, you were always beautiful and radiant, but something has shifted. I can see your blood is circulating. Your energy is so up. I'm like, it, Marva, you, you're doing it. This is City of Wellness. I love that you took that on. And you said, wait a minute, if I fall, it's okay because I, you've been doing something for all your life, passed down to the bloodline and how we eat as a family. But now, honey, you have the glow. You have reversed the aging process. It is so on. <laughs> you are it's ready for your spring cleaning. You are ready. It, it is, it is yeah. amazing. And it was such a yeah. gift to me. And I thank you. It's been a gift to my spirit as well. So let's talk about what the nutritional guidelines are. So what are the specific guidelines that you recommend for people who are seeking a detox, or just yeah. to, to restart and cleanse. Okay. Well, there's some things. It's first of all, what is your purpose? You have to have a reason for doing it that's going to motivate you. And some want to just use 10, you want to lose 10 pounds or more. And some say, well, I wake up tired. I go to sleep tired. They want more energy. So you got to get clear. Some say, well, I have a fibroid. I want to shrink it. So, okay, we eat to live now and eat to get well. And some will say, I want to just stop having negative people. I'm attracted to but negative people. I'm always arguing and fighting. I'm, I wake up stressed out. I, I, and, and that's their lifestyle. So whatever the reason is, just get really clear on your purpose. Write it down so you get real clear. And then you take day one, day two. I, whatever that is, 21 days will change your life, change your habits. So purpose is the first thing. Preparation is right now. We, the three of us together like this, we are preparing it. But when I saw that, that uh, the food going in, what I said, wow. And that goes on for months and years. And we got all this backup. I was a calling purpose for 15 years. I know I was cleaning out years of people's stuff. Their personalities would shift. They would be more healthy. Their skin would become radiant. They would drop that weight because all that gook that you demonstrated, Kepra, that's a lot of the 10 pounds, 15 pounds backed up in our systems and it's poisoning us. So pre preparation is what we're doing right now. It's eating different, making some changes and, and putting the good take it, and the bad will leave. Taking in the juice and prep. Process is what we're doing now. And what will you get? You will get the results of your work. Coming into spring is so powerful because this is our spring cleaning season we're coming into. So what, everything we're going to be talking about is going to prepare you. So I would say, find out what realm you're going to come in the doorway with. 
Are you going to come in as a flexitarian for 21 days and say, okay, for 21 days, I'm not eating beef or goat lamb. I may have a little bit of chicken, organic, maybe a few times a week. I may have fish, unshell fish, no lobsters, no crab, because they have the, the feeders and they eat all the garbage from the bottom of the ocean. So I'll come just as chicken and fish, small amounts during the daytime, not at night, because that sits in the body and it ferments and it just wakes, you wake up with it. That's how we're waking up exhausted. Some may say, you know, I'm not going to do flexible. I'm going to do a vegetarian, but I'm going to cook. I'm going to steam. I'm going to bake, but I'm not going to microwave because that puts radiation, that radiates and poisons the food. I'm going to take food, foods that have seeds in them I'm, because that's GMO. So the food is becoming toxic because it has no life in it. And then some will say, you know, I'm going to do live foods for 21 days or even seven days. And I'm just going to eat foods cooked by the sun, having a salad twice a day. And with an avocado to go with it, lubricates the cold in the joints. You get younger while you're doing this cleanse. You get more vibrant, alive, alert. Your mind comes back to you. Your energy comes back to you. And so much, so many blessings are going to come. And then someone said, you know what? I'm so advanced. I've been doing this for a while. I think I'm going to do a juice fast. It may be a three-day, maybe a seven-day, maybe a 21. I'm just going to liquefy. We're made of 75% liquid. Most people are dehydrated. That's to come up. Our bones are hurting. Our knees are hurting. Our ankles are hurting. Drink your water. 16 ounces in the morning, midday, afternoon, sunset, as, as uh, uh, Kepra is showing over for lime water, lemon water. Yes, do that every day. <laughs> you know we got to show up, Queen. Let's go to Ruda, honey. Yes, indeed. It flushes out your respiratory system. It flushes out that, that mucus system, the colon. The whole body is just plaqued up. So once you start drinking warm water and it's lime water or lemon water or even apple cider vinegar, all of a sudden, you feel vibrant. You start to feel younger. And every day that you have a full day of healing, whatever level that is, a bowl of fruit in the morning with your lemon water, midday have a large salad, some steamed veggies, and have your avocados, or for those who are going to be flexitarian, have a steamed fish. When you have a day of that and then you go to sleep and rest, you're not aggravated. You don't have, people ask me all the time, so how was your sleep? Did you sleep all right? I said, that's the best thing I do. I sleep so beautiful and so well, and I wake up with a vision. So there's so many blessings that are already in us, but we've got to clean our house. The body house, a home house. Talking about the home, you got to set up your kitchen lab. That's why I'm, I'm here. I'm here to teach us how to go through this 21 day. I want to meet everybody on spring. The day, first day of spring is when we're going to begin. It's the 21st of March. All we're doing now is go buy your juicer. Go get your enema bag. Um, go get your journal. Go start gathering the things that you can relate to. Get a wooden board to chop up your fruits and vegetables. Get a food processor. Get the things to set your home up for your wellness. Get a yoga mat. Let's all in New York City, in Atlanta. I remember we was on our first call. People were calling from all parts of the country, different cities. We're all on board. As a matter of fact, March the 5th, we're all going to start our power walking around the world. We have about 12 cities that said they're going, they're going to lead. They're going to be leaders in the power walking City of Wellness movement. So we'll all get moving all at one time. All the cities are sick. It's time for a global city detox. That's the call. Yes. And yeah. Queen, can I just can I just double dutch Please. something that you said? You, yes. you gave so much great information. It's also about times of day. Remember that breakfast uh -huh. is breaking the yes. fast. So you know yes, when yes. they would say breakfast is the most important meal of the day? It's uh -huh. the most important time of the day, but not Tell for it. a heavy meal. Right? right you're supposed to flush you're supposed to break the fast so let's yes. shift that language breakfast Absolutely. is the most important time to <laughs> rise and flush so when you break the flush yeah, but you don't, you honey, that's a beautiful stage yeah yes. and then lunch lunch would be the mm. heaviest meal because that's the high time of the day when your body has more time yes. to digest yes. everything you have several hours and then in the yes. evening again is your lightest meal and so just yeah. keeping that in mind as you go through the detox and try to have your latest meal, your lightest meal as early as possible, like before 8 p.m. So nice. that you, your body has time to actually nice. process everything because you can accelerate your aging when your body is working too hard to metabolize the food. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm, I wrote that down. I quoted that's your quote, rise and flush. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's that bagels on their way to work in that corporate, they jacked up before they even begin that day. And then, you, and, then, we go. and then, and then you need coffee, a stimulant, right? It's almost like you're, you're uh, like a defibrillator and you need that to be stimulated. And then, and then you're taking on a lot of stress. So Absolutely. that's a fact. I got a colonic, um, 
last week, I, I yeah. felt so amazing. And I'm oh, adding man. that because you mentioned enema bag and many people mm. may say, what are you talking about? Right. <laughs> but what happens is when you start to detox, your body is not able to move all, everything out as fast yeah, as you're yeah, detoxing yeah. internally. So it's good to have assistance with some yeah. sort of irrigation and you could do it at home or if it's your first time, you can go to a professional, but it's highly recommended. Or you can eat okra three times a week and, and flush out your colon. Or you can have yes. a, two, a tablespoon of flaxseed you soak overnight and make some apple juice. Apple and pear juice is a natural laxative and it moves the body from an acid to an alkaline state. I'm just having the greatest time with me the three too. of us here together, <laughs> bringing this healing. Marvin said, look at me, look at my glow. You know, I'm living this life and I'm not stressing about it either because we don't have to stress. Any, if you do one improvement a day, then that's going to take you that much closer to your wellness goal. Don't put, like, I'll give you a lot of information to take, but what you do is you take what resonates, One day at a time what really speaks to you. And then you just add it and you saw add. By the time we get to the 21st, everybody's on higher ground. We have prepared ourselves as a community, a global community of wellness. Right now, the pandemic is still happening and people are still keeping their distance and all of this. But if we boost up our immune system, then we can protect ourselves internally and externally. So that's my so then let's quickly remind because because it, it is a lot of information. So just to kind of give the, the basics. So 21 days, you're starting in the spring, you recommend folks start in the spring, and they can use this time to prepare. And then so what are the basics? So what do you start your day with? Okay, I would say prepare every day have your line with hold up the line water, the lemon line, hold that up. So they show and tell every day. And I would say do that twice a day. Do that first thing in the morning, because that breaks up like for those who are suffering from asthma, or allergies, hay fever, shortness of breath, um, congested sinus, so that that means that the brain is going to be a little slower, right? You're not going to be functioning at your optimal. And do the same thing before you go to bed at night. So while you're resting, you're breaking up all that congestion. When you wake up in the morning, mucus comes out, you start to, to drain it out. And then go shopping and bring in not a, a, a whole cart of starchy foods and junk food, bring in all the foods that you just love. And different fruits do different things for the body. If you have indigestion and bloating, then you want to get a papaya. If you have constipation, you want to get your apples, your pears, and your okra. If you have, um, if your blood is uh, toxic and you're breaking out and skin issues, um, shingles or eczema, you want to get some cranberry juice. And, and, and so uh, that's what I'm teaching. So you get different foods to help the body. For those who have a juice, so dust it off and make some fresh vegetable juice every other day at least. Cucumber is good for the nervous system, those who are stressing. Um, celery is also good for the nervous system and the skin, make your skin healthy. The kale and the chard is good for your energy level. And then you add a piece of ginger, the ginger root in there about the size of your palm, and that's for circulation. So if you feel a little numbing around your lips or your fingertips, that's pre-stroke. You don't need to go there. Do that every other day, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you have this vitality you know the young people are, they roll around with me because um i can run faster than them hey get on my bike <laughs> but it's for all of us we can have longevity so on our way like on our way to our wellness we start picking up healthier habits my book is out um get on um, um amazon and get city of wellness book i have over 300 recipes in that book so you could have you have enough to where food is medicine have, make sure you get two salads a day, even if you don't get one. That one is going to act like rotor root and clean out that colon. The average person is carrying anywhere between 10 to 15 pounds of impacted waste in their colons. And Kepra has given us the demonstration of the reason why. If you put all that in, the body doesn't know what to do with it. It doesn't process it, so it stays in. And you can tell it's staying in because you have gas, you have body odors, you're quick to anger, you have constipation, you might get hemorrhoids. For women who have tumors, it may be sitting on the uterus causing com uh, congestion, erectile dysfunction in men. I, I know all of them are going to start cleansing now. <laughs> so these are <laughs> things that happen as a result of constipation. If you have three meals a day, you're supposed to have three eliminations, three bowel moves a day. If you have two meals, at least two eliminations. But if you have three meals a day, at the end of seven days, that's 21 meals. But if you're only having one elimination for the day, that's 14 meals backed up in your colon. 14 meals of what Kepra just demonstrated us, we're in trouble. High blood pressure, diabetes, headaches, depression, lack of energy and vitality, quick to anger, fighting with people, want to hurt somebody. All that is all that poison that's in our bloodstream 
that's in our arteries, that's in our colons, that has us fighting in cities and hurting each other. You know, I know that the peace movement that Erica Ford is all about, that the more peace that people have inside, the more peace that people have on the outer side. And then we'll get a chance to talk to each other as opposed to attack each other. We'll get a chance to be in mm -hmm. harmony with each other and our families. People will close their doors, they look perfect, but they close their doors, a lot of fighting is happening in families. So we have to stop the violence with our food, stop the violence with our, in our homes, and stop the violence still in our homes. It's all of this. We're gonna stop all the violence and get our peace and our power back. So Queen, I know you have um, some, uh, some time constraints. How are we doing on time? You, you have I have no more time constraints. All that's been taken out of the equation. Oh, perfect, well. okay, 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 because we have some <laughs> questions. So um, two things specifically, uh, diabetes and acid reflux. Do you have any guidance on how to address those? Yes, diabetes, acid, okay. For the acid reflux, the lime water twice a day. In the beginning, you'll think something's wrong, but all of a sudden you'll be doing a lot of burping. That means because you're so dehydrated. So that's why I said drink. You have your lime water, lemon water in the morning, two, two limes or two lemons, and then you do it again in the evening time. Now what's going to happen? Your, your system is going to start releasing the gases. And when that happens, you're not sick, you're actually getting well. And then, and, then by, and then drinking water in between the day and then cutting back on your starches because that is contributing to the acid reflux. Start to just have more foods that are cooked. It's home cooking, stop going out and, and frying and uh, microwaving and uh, GMO, all that, try to cut back on that. For the diabetes, I would say um, juice yourself one cup of stream bean juice. You can add cucumbers to it if you're... Um, you know, your kidneys are, you have an issue. You could add celery if you're stressed out to it. And if you do that, that will also help to build up your system. Um, with that, cut out the sugar. Most people are addicted to sugar. Sugar is put into most of our foods. 70%, well, I'll say, um, sugar is, uh, you could check it out on, on uh, it, research it. It is in alignment to uh, crack and cocaine. It's only a few molecules away from crack and cocaine. So most people are drugged out. That's going to be, we can't break addictions because once it locks into those cells, it lives there. So you have to do really uh, heavy work to flush all that sugar out. So we want sweet. You have your apples, you have your pears, you have your plums, you have your grapes, you have your cherries, you have your blueberries, strawberries. Blueberry. I mean, it's ongoing. So you start to bring that into your diet. That becomes your fun food. My great fun food. Peaches are coming in soon. I can't wait for a divine peach. I get to them at one time. Watermelons, when that comes in in June, you want to get the one with the seeds in them. And your body, and see, when you eat natural food, they have a, each one food has a benefit to it. So you don't want to eat uh, unconscious eating. You eat anything all emotional. Conscious eating is you get full on healthy foods. So if you know the stream bridge is going to help your, to prevent the diabetic condition and putting garlic in to your soups and your salads or scallions or red rash is gonna to help to bring your pressure down and fight infection. So now you're eating with such fun because like, wow, if I make this soup, it's gonna put some okra, it's gonna clean out my colon. If I put some garlic or some leeks in, it's gonna bring my pressure down. And if I put some celery in, I'm gonna be calm as a cucumber. So, I mean, it, food is medicine and just to know what to do. So we're gonna just do and gather now. This is a gathering. Most people have some of these things already in their home. Most people have some cayenne pepper. Put that in with your kidney liver flush in the morning, get that circulation up, and then that helps them boost up your immune system, get that vitamin C in. So we have some, most people have some garlic in their home. We have lemons, we have limes. Get a big bowl. I remember Carol had a big bowl of fruit, you know, and, and she said, and, and she was just looking like the fruit itself. And it, <laughs> you know, you are what you eat. If you eat well, you'll be well. If you eat well and healthy from, gar from the garden, from nature, you'll have health and longevity. And you, have, you, you really reclaim yourself now. We don't have to always get surgery. We have to first check in with our inner doctor. You know, Dr. Nature is supporting us. Air, fire, water, earth. So this is all the prep for our, our great day. It was March 21st. So you mentioned... You mentioned um, anger, right? You eat yes. the wrong foods and you're angry, you want to fight with people, So, which speaks to how food influences our mood. Kepra, can you touch upon that? Because I, I know the times where I have had the, the worst diet, again, we're not food shaming, but we went to a lot of junk food, a lot of processed food, a lot of sugar, a lot yeah. of fat. I've been sad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it has affected my spirit in a really yeah. profound way. What is the connection between what we're eating and our mental health and spiritual well-being? 
Well, physically, it's all about the blood. So just remember, the bitters make you sweet and the sweets make you bitter. The sugar causes the <laughs> blood to become acidic. The starch, the reason why you have high blood pressure and why garlic actually helps lower the blood pressure is because when you eat like this, the blood can't move. Imagine the blood is taking sludge and bringing it through different parts of the body. So because now the blood is heavy with the sludge, it's not moving fast enough. Mm. So the heart has to pump faster to push the blood. That's why you have high blood pressure. Blood pressure. And so uh -huh. once the blood pressure is high, because it's trying to get through instead of flowing through the body, mm. it heats up. Now the body is heated. That's why in the hood we say, why are you so heated? You know, because now your blood is acidic. And imagine acid going to your organs. Imagine acid going to the nervous system. So the wires, which are your nerves, are frayed. That's why people say, you're getting on my last nerve. You got one nerve left. Good right? left. <laughs> and they get on the last one because the nerves are frayed and it makes you more susceptible to stress. Mm -hmm. And remember, you have a physical body and an energetic body. So now when stress comes, the pressure, you don't have enough oxygen in the cells to navigate, to breathe. So because you're filled with toxic blood, right? And so that's why you're more irritable. Also, because you have all of this stuff here. And so mm. like, you, you know, you just like, mm. you, you, mm. you know, you, have, you ever have to go and you're at work and you don't want to because you feel uncomfortable and now you kind of like bound all day. Or if you ever see a baby, when they're constipated, they get, they show the stress on the mm. face. And again, that increases the blood pressure. So you want to do everything possible to bring oxygen to the blood. And that mm. comes from deep breathing. It comes from eating lighter. It comes mm. from eating more live food. Mm -hmm. When Queen mentioned garlic, garlic naturally lowers the blood pressure. So you can shave garlic on your salad and not cook, do it raw. You know, the other thing that, um, of obviously the water and, and being mindful again of what you're making things mean because your mind is going to tell your brain, we're under attack send hormones, stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline because we're under attack and that heats up the blood. So again, the blood, the bowels, the breath, the brain. You want to keep the blood clear. You want to keep your sugar intake down. You want to keep your bowels clean and you want to sharpen your brain. So Queen talked before about ginkgo biloba, you know, which is really good for the brain. Or you can consider taking some adaptogens like ashwagandha to naturally just balance the nervous system. And there's one other, um, so I hope that explains, you know, the, the relationship to behavior and eating. But I also wanted to share one more thing. Um, Queen had mentioned drinking string bean juice because string beans provide a natural source of insulin as well. So it's good for people to know the science behind it. So they're like, oh, wow, I'm actually getting natural insulin from string beans. But another plant that I love that does it all, this is a one-stop shop, this is aloe vera. And so yeah. I first started eating aloe vera, um, studying through uh, Queen of Fua's Sacred Woman program. Queen of Fua had us going out to the botanical garden. She had us going out to the, to the parks, picking up plants, looking at herbs. Mm -hmm. And so aloe vera has more than 75 vitamins and minerals. The sliminess of the gel in the aloe vera is like okra. It helps to keep your bowels clean. So it's great mm -hmm. for the immune system. It also cleans the blood. It detoxifies the blood and it reduces inflammation. So as we prepare to detox, I challenge everybody with the eat aloe vera challenge. Wash off the aloe vera, cut off the thorns, slice a small piece, and the challenge is to eat this like it's a delicious piece of candy because this is extremely bitter. Can you Most show people, me? Can you take a bite? Because oh, I'm just yeah. uh, <laughs> Crunch. Mm. Okay. And what does it taste mm. like? Go ahead, Kevin, mm. show it. <laughs> okay, so that what, is what a does challenge. That, what does it taste like? So it's extremely bitter, but because I have been cleansing, yes. it's, it's not, it's actually refreshing for me. It, mm -hmm. It's going to be extremely bitter for you, but remember, bitters right. make the blood sweet, sweets make mm -hmm. the blood bitter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So aloe vera, during the height of COVID, we said, what can we do in our community where people can yes. find something inexpensive, this is like $3, that can be a one-stop shop. 
Yes. Because it reduces inflammation, it cleans the blood, it cleans the colon. So you got the blood, the bowels, the brain, you know, all in one, and it builds the immune system. And it has more than 70 vitamins and minerals. So we were challenging people. I even juice it. Remember, a lot of the nutrients are in the skin. So you just want to clean it really well. I use lemon to wash the skin and then some apple cider vinegar for an extra wash. You could soak it in some salt water as well. I cut off the rind here. You slice mm -hmm. off the thorns mm -hmm. and you cut yourself a piece. So I'm challenging. We bring in back the eat aloe vera challenge. Mm -hmm. Have a slice a day. Have it like at night because it's going to work mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. but it, but the cleansing is healing. So there you I go. Love, I love that. For your skin, hair and nails. <laughs> I love it. It's something new. Um, I didn't know you could, honestly, I didn't know you could eat it that way. I've only ever mm -hmm. used it topically, like for bug yes. bites and burns and things like that. Yes. Um, so that's great information. So we're getting a lot of questions in about specific ailments. So Queen, I'm just going to mention a mm -hmm. few things and you just tell me what comes to mind in terms of nutritional treatments for these things. Hot mm -hmm. flashes, skin, making your skin look better, um, and anemia. Okay, anemia, I'm just gonna get hot flashes, anemia, and what's the other one? Skin, so that's a beauty question, but I'm okay. only here for the yeah, beauty yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> anemia, let's, let's, we have to build up our blood. So you can take the berry family, the blueberries, start incorporating that, like in the morning you have some apples and pears to slice those up, or put it in a blender, make it into an apple pear sauce, and then put a handful of blueberries, or blackberries, or raspberries, or cranberries, any of the berry family, a half a cup of any of those berries or a mixture, that will boost up the blood. Also taking unsweetened cranberry juice that has no sugar in it and take a half of a cup to a cup of it and add one or two cups of water behind it. That also helps to boost up the blood um, for, for your anemic. And then uh, taking chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a sun food. So from the sun through photosynthesis goes into the plant and when we take it in, it gives us sunlight literally gives us energy and vitality. So that's, those are some of the things you can do for anemia. Also red clover tea, um, boil uh, two or three cups of water at night, turn off the flame, and then put two teaspoons or three teaspoons of red clover tea. That will, be, that will boost up the um, anemia, get rid of the tiredness fatigue. And also dandelion, dandelion is high in iron. Um, so those are just some of the things for, for that. In terms of hot flashes, hot flashes are coming, um, as a result of having years of a high level of uh, meat intake and the body starts to boil, literally. So the body's on a boiling point. So when you're going through your menopausal stage or just coming into it, those hot flashes are coming. How do you cool that down? You can cool it down by taking a cucumber. You can have cucumber to your salad, a whole cucumber, chop it up, try to get organic and put that in your salad. But even quicker, if you juice a whole cucumber, with other greens, any type of other greens, but the cucumber will help to cool the body down. And in terms of the skin, the skin represents the bloodstream. It represents what's going on inside. That means stress. So then I want you to take time to do self-inventory, our citizens of wellness, and say, what is stressing me out? Is it the relationship? Is it looking at bad news all the time? Like, this is good news. Marva, this is good news. Thank you, our top journalists. You know, this is bringing good news to the people. And this is getting people out of the stress zone, which is showing up in their skin. I have a very personal connection to the skin because I had eczema as a teenager from head to toe. You too, too, honey. Well, oh, we my, love skin each other. So, my skin is so smooth and clean. gorgeous and smooth. Never, I used to have it right in between my <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, right my here, knees, right the arm. And I it. thought. I'm sorry, I just got it. Go ahead, excited. no, no, we're in it together. Go ahead. I thought that it was something for the rest of my life. Oh. I hated being outside in the heat. And then when That's you it. scratch it, it would get scabby. And it just yeah. was the worst. And it was because, I mean, you know, growing up, you don't know your parents are doing the best that they can. You have four yeah, yeah. children. You're trying to make it work. But it was the starch and the sugar. You know, yeah. when I actually yeah. removed starch, sugar, and dairy from my, from my nutritional intake, my menses regulated, my skin Everything. cleared up. I mean, yes, I had yes. cystic acne where you couldn't even pop it. And you mm. would never know that today. So yes, again, keeping the blood clean, like everything you're talking about, even the burdock root. Burdock root is excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, the so there was a specific question about burdock root. So can you talk about that? 
So burlock is an excellent blood cleanser. You know, mm -hmm. you can juice it, you could actually boil it, you could slice it and mm -hmm. eat it raw, but it's excellent for cleaning the blood. And remember, mm -hmm. you want to clean the blood. The blood mm -hmm. will keep your skin clear. The blood will reduce the issues with menopause because it's mm -hmm. not heating up. Like Queen of Fool was yeah. talking about. I love she said you're boiling. Because again, mm -hmm. the pressure to move that sludge. And so if you yeah. think about the science behind it, because there's a mm -hmm. lot, Queen of Four, Queen of Four is a walking encyclopedia of knowledge. And in five minutes, she can give you 50,000 things because she's a ninja. Like she lives this, she does this. And she's writing a book right now as we speak. I bet you she's writing something right now. And right after this live, she's gonna be like, I just wrote another book. But when your blood is clear, your energy is okay. high, right? You get can you, uh, Kepra, repeat that because you froze for one second. Go back. When your blood is clear, your energy is high because the mm -hmm. oxygen is flowing. It's yeah. all about keeping yeah. the blood clean and clear. Yeah. So whether it's burdock, our Caribbean community, mm. you know about the bitter herbs. Again, mm -hmm. the aloe vera, I'm telling you, the aloe vera tonight, get some aloe. I know a lot of sisters that are in the other stage of life don't have hot flashes, haven't gotten gray hair. Just, you know, it, it, it really is first the internal cleansing and it balances out your hormones. It's about homeostasis. It's about mm -hmm. leveling out, you know, yes, and really yes, being good yes. because we know how to look good. But just yes. because we look good and just because we're slim doesn't mean we're healthy. Just like mm -hmm. just because you're full figured doesn't mean you're unhealthy. Ah, so it's really about that balance. Mm -hmm. So That's we've well gotten said. so many questions in about specific conditions. I don't think we have the time to go through all of them. But what that tells me is that there is a lot of thirst for more information about using nutrition to make us healthier and address these conditions and not always going to pharmaceuticals as the first resort. So Queen, do you have any resources that you can direct people to where they can do some of their own research or get information mm -hmm. on what mm -hmm. they specifically need? Yes. Well, Sacred Woman is one of the books. That's a woman's, though the women tell me it's a woman's Bible. Um, that right that the first chapter talks about wound healing they can come in for those women who are having fibroids and cysts and vaginal discharges and endometriosis and all of that can be rectified through what we put in our bodies and what we put in our hearts and what mm -hmm. we hold on to so that's a good resource book another book is finally is back out again um, just got it back out again city of wellness restoring your health through the seven kitchens of consciousness I talk about the emerald green kitchen for cleansing. I speak about the fastest kitchen, kitchen, the healer's kitchen, um, your the soul food vegan kitchen where I have recipes that are from. I have Nigerian or African recipes that are in there that I doctored up a bit. I have the southern soul food recipes that I doctored up a bit so that you can have your sweet potato pie without hurting yourself. <laughs> and I have um, Caribbean soul food that these are donated recipes that from different communities that I have actually make sure I took out the butter and replaced it for olive oil or took out this regular salt table salt, put the sea salt and took out the eggs and then the egg replaced it. So I veganized it. So that's a wonderful book for anyone to come. And then Heal Thyself, the book is a good education. Um, how to come into it is your beginning. That book was written about 35 years ago. So in terms of doing some preparing, for our March 21st detox. We're going to do a global detox, a citywide detox. So this is helping education. This is what we're serving today. This is the preparation that I have to offer. And, um, you know, so that's what that's what's that I, I would encourage to read and study and not to get stressed out about all this information. Take that aloe. Eat a piece of aloe. Let's see where you are with that one. <laughs> Yeah, there were okay. a lot of posts about the aloe, Kepper. You set us on fire. Do you have any um, parting words? Yeah, you know, it's all about balance, right? So Queen is giving you a lot of the details, the recipes. Yes, purchase City of Wellness, support one of our queen, our, our queen mother matron of wellness. She is royalty in our community. Purchase impeccable listening because a lot of what you're eating is based on what's going on on your mind. And so you really want to tap in to get the guidance. Think about when you're craving food and you're not even hungry, that's emotional eating. So spend some time just observing yourself. Keep in mind the times of day that you eat. If you're going to eat your heaviest meal, eat it at lunchtime and consider like Queen has taught us, 
putting your heaviest food over a bed of greens instead of a bed of rice. So if you're gonna have your stewed chicken or your fish, put it over a bed of raw spinach or romaine. Remember that when you apply fire to anything living, you evaporate the life. So the more you cook your vegetables, the more you're evaporating the life because vegetables and fruits are already cooked from the ground. So you really don't have to add anything else to that. So please okay. keep that in mind. And the other thing is just a simple thing about food combining. Vegetables are like Beyonce. They go with everything. You know, vegetables <laughs> know, go right. with proteins. Vegetables go with starch. But <laughs> starch and protein don't go together. Starch and protein mm -hmm. get together. They get locked up and they start fighting because they get stuck together. Ooh. Right? So vegetables will kind of know Good. how to soften the starch and move it out. Vegetables also know how to ease out that heavy protein. So if you're going to mm -hmm. have your protein, have protein and veggies. And disregard mm -hmm. the starch, especially if you're trying to lose weight. If you're going to have a starch, try to have something that has legs, like a multi-grain or a whole grain, and have that with some veggies. So just some fundamentals to keep in mind. And obviously, drink your water. Get your rest and breathe. One last thing. Really take some time every day to just sit in silence and allow yourself to just focus on breathing. Even if you do four deep breaths in the morning, Inhale, exhale, that's one breath. Do that four times. What that does is give you more space in your mind because the mind is cluttered with a lot of thoughts. And so it's actually the space between your thoughts where your spiritual intuition and guidance lives. But if you're constantly overthinking, over consuming information, there's no space. That's why people say, give me some space. Mm -hmm. And when you create more space in your mind, you can tap into that supreme intelligence that we all have access to, which will give you the courage and self-discipline to love yourself into wellness. This is great. Um, one quick uh, note, Kepper, last time we talked, you were hiring. You still, you still got jobs? Yes, 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 yes. So we are still seeking credible clinicians. Credible clinicians are people who have lived experience and or institutional experience. We will accept both. We want qualified people who are willing to bring our traditional culturally attuned responses to trauma for black and brown people impacted by the trauma of violence, poverty, illness. So please go to lifecampinc.com forward slash jobs and look for the credible clinician job application, fill it out. We're looking for two credible clinicians, ideally based in Southeast Queens, but if you're not based in Queens, you gotta know Queens and be able to get to it quickly. And we're also looking for a therapeutic services coordinator. So that's someone who can coordinate and drive the trains and help us coordinate events and keep us on track. So again, lifecampinc.com forward slash jobs, credible clinician and therapeutic services coordinator. Thank you, Mara. Yes. And uh, on the bottom, you see the pinned uh, comment. That is the information if you want to attend tonight's um, group meditation session to help Queen and her family keep their home. If you missed the beginning of the conversation, um, they believe they are the victims of deed theft and they may lose their home over this, the home that's been in their family for generations. So please come out if you can. Uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern tonight. Eastern. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't send up a prayer, uh, send, send good energy her way. Queen, Kepra, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, for everybody who asks, this list live will live. We're going to save it, hopefully. Now, you got to pray because the Instagram gods have been acting up all along. <laughs> I'm going to try to save it, and then it should be on all of our pages. So on Kepra's, on Queen's, and on mine. Um, so that's where it's going to live. It will live somewhere. So follow all three of us, and you'll yeah. find it somewhere. <laughs> Follow us. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful day. See you next week. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. People were celebrating. What, what were you feeling in the aftermath of the governor's order? Crushed. Angry. Literally just crushed and angry. Like, people say, oh, you got another day to fight. That's another day of suffering for me. Joining us now is Mara Schiavacampo, host of the Run Tell This podcast. And Mara, you've spoken to him a number of times, and you said his mood has changed. 
Yeah, so I spoke to him a number of times leading up to his scheduled execution date, and he was always positive and upbeat and hopeful. In this recent conversation that we had, he was a different man. He is angry, he is despondent, and he is hopeless. And let's be clear about why he feels this way. The order of clemency came with the condition that he would never be able to seek clemency, pardon, or parole again. So he is essentially, as far as we can tell in our records, the only person in U.S. history to ever be banned from seeking release. So this puts him in an unprecedented legal position, and there is no clear legal path forward. He believed that November 18th was going to be the end of his sentence one way or the other. Either he would be released or he would be put to death. And he said he was prepared to death and not afraid to die. But now Julius Jones finds himself in this unprecedented legal purgatory with no clear way forward. While it's important to recognize and acknowledge that it was a good night for hip hop, it's also important to recognize that it was a bad day for the movement because the NFL was able to successfully use black performers to distract black audiences from the issues that are important to them without making any meaningful change whatsoever. It's a little bit like putting a Band-Aid on a tumor. All the problems that the NFL has been accused of are still there. They are still active. They know that they have a PR problem. The reason we know they have a PR problem is because they did put all of this diversity in front of the camera. Now, that's a good thing. All of these black performers deserve those opportunities and should be showcased, but that is not enough. What Brian Flores is fighting for, what Colin Kaepernick was robbed of, is economic opportunity in the NFL, and that is what they consistently refuse to make changes on. Okay, Mario, you'll turn the comments off? Yes, I will. Give me one second. Okay. 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 Hello, everyone. I see that people are just starting to join. Uh, we're going to get started in a second. We are waiting for our second illustrious guest to join us. So we're just going to give that a beat. But I'm here with Kepra. Hi, Kepra. Greetings, Mara. So good to see you. It's you look good to beautiful see you as always. Thank you. So for all of you guys who are just joining, um, I'm really, really happy that you're here. Um, please stick around. We are getting Queen on. We have an amazing conversation planned um, about healing the mind and healing the heart. That's what we're focusing on today. And if you're anything like me, it's definitely a conversation that we need right now. Um, we all need it. Uh, the barista this morning said to me, the last two years have been trash. I was buying coffee. <laughs> I said, yeah, I can agree with wow. that. <laughs> well, you know, you okay. get compliments from trash, go. too. There she is. Please. 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 Yes, right, so good please. to be with you. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You're so in the city of wellness. Yay. Hello, <laughs> um, so Laura we're just going to give one second to get, what's this alert? Um, we're just going to give one second for Dara to get up to speed because we are simulcast streaming this to Facebook as well as to IG Live, which everybody is on now. And mm -hmm. so we just want to give a second for the IG Live to get up. Um, again, thank you to everybody who is joining us. We are here for an amazing conversation about healing the mind and heart today. Um, here we go. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So we are heading up on Facebook as well. So if you, if you have a friend who wants to watch and prefers Facebook, please tell them that they can find us there as well. All right. So I'd love to get started. Um, this event, this conversation is really due to you guys, all of you watching, because thanks to your feedback and your DMs and your messages, the City of Wellness decided to do a deeper dive and to start a three-part series on healing the mind and heart, the body and the soul. And this is because of the phenomenal response of previous programming like this um, that they created. But this time they wanted to do things a little differently. They wanted to make it interactive. Why? So that we can hear from you in real time and get your questions real time, but most importantly, answer your questions in real time. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So we have turned the comments off. Um, this is just a, so that we don't have comments running over the faces